All right, welcome back to my mom's basement. But once again, another emergency from the top rope edition of my mom's basement. Just days after we did the last one. It's funny, we don't do these for years sometimes. And then we do two in one week, but it felt necessary. We only have one news item to talk about, really. But it kind of dated the last show we did immediately on SmackDown last night. So, Karabas, welcome back to the basement. We're going to talk wrestling again. And shit has changed in the last two days. The Red Sox just brought back Theo Epstein, and I did an emergency podcast faster for this than I did for the Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> like Theo Epstein's back, no pod, no emergency pod, yeah. and we have the Rock and Roman in the main event of night two of WrestleMania. I'm like, Bob, we got to fucking get in the lab. Like, let's I, once go. again, yeah, I got the the Carabas rocket signal, which is I'm available for media. You'll not yeah. text me to say I'm available for media. I feel like a, a press reporter or something. I'm like, all right, let's hop in the basement. Let's discuss it. Last night on SmackDown, they advertised Cody Rhodes will make his decision. And we know he's going to face off with Roman first time in months. Super excited for SmackDown. We hear during the day, The Rock is like at a gym in Birmingham, Alabama. And if The Rock is in Alabama and SmackDown's in Alabama, that's why The Rock is there. He's not just hanging out in Alabama, you know? So it's like, all right, how is The Rock going to factor into this? I know they just added the big special guest referee mode for the video game. And my mind went right to that. I'm like, are they going to have The Rock be the special guest referee for Cody versus Reigns? And that'll be the way they make sure it's a fair match this time. No solo interference. But no, they, they face off. First of all, Roman takes a bunch of shots at Seth, which were great. Someone put the, uh, was it the other beat behind it? And they were like, it's mm. bad. Cody talks about how much he wants the title on Roman's shoulder. How was the title Bruno held? How was the title that got ripped out of Dusty's hands? How it's the title he'll always want to finish the story. And I'm like, sweet. This is exactly what I want. You tell Roman you're coming for him at WrestleMania. He says, Roman, I'm coming for you, but not at WrestleMania. And then he says this. You got the clip? I mentioned taking counsel. Roman, one of the individuals I talk to he knows you very well the most disliked video in WWE <laughs> YouTube history not the most electrifying man in sports entertainment. That's not what I was going to say. The most electrifying man in entertainment is here on Friday Night SmackDown. The most disliked video <laughs> in the history of WWE's YouTube channel. Uh, that's what that clip currently in nine hours. It took nine yeah. hours for it to become that. Um, it was, I mean, listen, Bob. You know where I'm at on Cody. Mm -hmm. Even I felt bad. <laughs> Even Bro. I felt, I did. I felt bad. Like that they whole... made him bring out the rock. Like he was happy about it. Yeah. They did I the mean... hug. It was like someone, I think Sean Ross sat posted the WrestleMania nine comparison of like Brett Harpy and like, yeah, Hulk, you go beat Yokozuna in the main event. I didn't want to anyway, basically like it was, it was unfortunately that. And I feel yeah. like Cody, I love Cody. I don't know if he hit it on his face very well. Like the second he came out in that segment, there was a pit in my stomach because it was like, what's going on here? Why does he look so sad? No. And and you know what? For anyone that uh, isn't a big fan of CM Punk, tell me when he's telling lies. Tell me when he's telling lies because this is what CM Punk said to Cody's fucking face. They hand you the cover of the WWE 2K video game. Congratulations, by the way. It's on sale pretty soon, I'm sure. And right when you're about to cross the finish line and finish your story. Oh, wait. What's that in the distance? It's a much bigger superstar that hasn't been around in a very long time. Coming to take it all away from you. Here it is. Here we are. Punk called it. Cody gets the cover of 2K. Just like Punk did in 13. And it's it's the very same superstar that took away the main event from <laughs> CM Punk. It's The Rock. And here he comes to take away the main event. But I think it's it's a it's it's almost a perfect comparison, but it is also imperfect at the same time where CM Punk deserved that main event 
multiple times. Um, yeah. that, that year that he had the, the, the match with Jericho at WrestleMania and 2011, 2012, 2013, he should have made evented at least one of those <laughs> WrestleManias did not happen with Cody. He was going to main event WrestleMania basically until CM Punk tore his tricep. And then you have the yeah. Brock situation. I don't know what to believe right now. I don't know where you fall on some of this stuff. And I think people are personally trying to make the rock look bad in all of this by making him sound like e egotistical or, or narcissistic by being like, Oh, Brock's gone and punk's hurt. So let me be the main event of WrestleMania because that's what's going to save the card. Like that's some of the shit that I've been reading is that that mm -hmm. was his line of thinking and that he forced himself into the main event of WrestleMania with Roman Reigns. But maybe there's some of that, but at the end of the day, I, even though this is what I want because I'm a Roman Reigns fan, I, I love that how fucking angry people are. <laughs> I love the fact that it's rock and Roman because that means that Roman's going over and he's coming for Hogan brother. So he's going to keep the title until at least September. But with, with if Cody's in the main event, do you really think how much do you really think that hurts viewer? Not hurts, but how much do you think that the rock being in that spot enhances WrestleMania versus Cody? Because this could be an easy case because everyone's trying to compare this to Daniel Bryan. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not the same. I don't think it's the same. Like, yes, people are pissing and moaning on the internet right now, but listen to that crowd. Like, The Rock yeah. came out and it, they popped. Like, they were happy. That crowd in Birmingham, Alabama was happy to see The Rock take Cody's spot. Obviously, the internet's crying about it. But when Batista won the Royal Rumble and and Daniel Bryan, was that the one that he wasn't even in it? That was the Rey Mysterio yeah. number 30. Yeah, like the, the fans turned on it. We don't really see that yet right now. Fans are pissed. No. But not in and I'm curious, yet. like, is that going to happen? I think there's a way where they could play it and that won't happen. People are going to be excited to see The Rock in every city he appears in in the lead up to WrestleMania just because he's The Rock. It makes sense. He hasn't been in the WWE consistently for 10 years, 11 years since WrestleMania 29's built. But I think there's also a way that they're going to play it where people are going to get pissed and chant Cody Rhodes during his segments. And you could have a weird environment for this build. I don't know, though, because, again, The Rock isn't Batista. I love Batista. But yeah. The Rock is on this next level where I think the hardcore wrestling fans hate it. And especially because Cody giving up the shot makes no sense with his character. Like Correct. everything about his character. I want to win the title. My dad got ripped out of his hands. And then for no good reason, he's like, eh, but not this year, I guess. It's strange. <laughs> it <makes no> sense. <laughs> and, and the other thing, too, is like we can sit here and say, oh, they cheered The Rock and this whole situation in Birmingham, Alabama. But to your point about the smart fans, guess who fucking goes to WrestleMania? Like those are all in the Philadelphia. Die hard. Yeah, in Philadelphia, who turned on Roman Reigns when he run, won the Royal Rumble and The Rock held up Roman's hand and they didn't give a fuck about The Rock being out there. So <laughs> yeah. it's, it is the diehard fans and it's Philly. So I could definitely see a scenario where the fans do turn on that match which would yeah. suck because I am excited to see it. Like I've been waiting totally. to see rock and Roman for a long time, but it is, is it a situation where you're sitting there being like, all right, yeah, like we want to see it too, but not right now. Like we wanted to see yeah. Cody and Roman and Cody have his moment. So my, I don't know. Me and my brother have been texting about this. And he said like the last time Roman was in the ring with rock, there was hashtag cancel WWE network was the number one trend <laughs> worldwide. Yeah. Yeah. It was like this time they're the most disliked video in the history of YouTube. Like rock must be looking at Roman like, bro, what the fuck is going on here? Do people <laughs> not want this? Cause again, like you said, if this match was happening at SummerSlam, there's not even uh, uh, an inch of doubt in that. It's going to be fan favorite. People are going to love the build. It's going to have that environment where they just have to face off in the middle of the ring and they're going to get a this is awesome chant. But now it feels like it's happening like in spite of Cody or at the expense of Cody. And people are like, what the fuck? And Dave Meltzer is saying, like you kind of talked about, he's saying the plan was Punk versus Rollins night one, Cody versus Roman night two. And the rock match was either going to happen in Saudi, which that immediately makes it less meaningful to me when it's like daytime. We know that you're doing it for money, too. Yeah. Or it was going to happen at next year's WrestleMania. If it happened at next year's WrestleMania after Cody took the title off Roman this year, everyone loves it. Like 
I don't, even though the rock hasn't been in the ring for 11 years, people are now bringing that up and saying, you know, he got blown up against gender, which we mentioned on the last podcast we did. That's also true. Tore his quadricep and got a bad hernia in his last match 11 years ago. Seemed like his body was telling him to slow down. Then is this even going to be a good match? If it's a bad match, man, they, they might have a, a Roman Brock reaction where they just start booing it and chanting for Bailey or something. So, uh, admittedly, I was, uh, I was on the phone when Cody was talking. So I was, I had it on, I was following along like lip reading. And I was like, I feel like I don't really need to be that tuned into this. <clears throat> I, I eventually went back and watched the whole segment. Like I had it on DVR, but to you, to what you were kind of just describing when I, 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 I'm watching Cody talk in front of Roman and then he stops talking and then the rocks music hit. And I'm like, all right, I got to call you back <laughs> to the, get off the phone. <laughs> and then Ro I mean, uh, the rock comes out and then you have like the handshaking and the hug exchange. So when, as he's walking out, I'm thinking, Oh, this is how they protect the rock. Now it's a triple threat. Like, how do we, yeah. like, we still tell the story with Cody, but like, we want to use the rock because uh, we need the star power with no Brock. Like I was like, and he's not going to be able to do like a full fucking 30 minute main event of WrestleMania. So this is how we protect the rock as a triple threat. He can like nap on the outside for half of it. Uh, so even I was a little surprised to see the rock kind of like be like, all right, you know, all right, dusty son. Thank you. But uh, yeah. the big boys are going to take over from here. Like I'm not a, I'm not a Cody hater, but he yeah, it sounded like it last week. I I'm not a Cody <laughs> hater. I, I don't, so this is this is serving the purpose, right? Because like you already have the people, the 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 Cody Bobos out there that want to <laughs> see him finish the story. You're a Cody Bobo. A uh, Bobo? What you're the Cody fuck? Bobo. And and I am someone that's like, I don't give a fuck about Cody's story. And then last night kind of made me be like, ah, you know what? They're made you feel bad for Cody. Yeah. Like, like if you're getting people <laughs> like me being like, fucking God damn, man. Like we got to see this guy finish the story. Like that. I, I don't know. I guess I'm in, I know that I'm in the minority. I know that they're not catering to fans like me. There aren't many fans left who are like, fuck yeah, Roman's going to win again. That's I'm that guy. But if you are trying to make, because I, I what I didn't want to have happen is when Cody finally finishes the story that you're expecting it. It kind of takes away from it a little bit. Like you're still going to get to see the moment. But like if he just if he main evented WrestleMania with Roman this year, we all know he's fucking going over. Like but you're just I walking. I don't think that takes away from it, to be honest, because I don't think it took away from WrestleMania 30 when Brian won. And like that seemed like a pretty foregone conclusion going in. Kind of. Because they were fucking with him the whole way. Like there could have been yeah. a scenario where they just continued to fuck with him. And, and which you could say the same fight. thing about this year with Roman's streak still being, you know, extended to September. Like, and there would still be a thought in the back of my mind. Like, are they going to fucking do this to Cody again? Uh, I, I guess they're also counting like house shows, which is kind of stupid. But uh, Roman's next win is his 1000th of his career. Oh, really? I didn't know yep. that. Who if he doesn't have that shit. That seems like the sort of thing I would just like forget about. And he'd be at a thousand and a hundred wins. And I'd be like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Forgot. <laughs> yeah. So hit between uh, untelevised and televised matches in the WWE, his next victory, if he doesn't have another match until WrestleMania, which seems to be what they're planning on, it will be his 1000th career win. So here's another question for you. It seems like now the direction will be Cody versus Rollins night one rock versus Roman night two. I don't think you can have Cody win that title in the night one main event. I think that makes the eventual finishing of the story have less impact. If he already won a world title in the WWE, that's not the world title, but it's a world title. But do you have Seth retain or do you have like Damian priest cash yeah, in? Yeah. And then your you two WrestleMania you endings to. this year, you are priest winning the title and Roman retaining. Philly is going to throw batteries at Santa again. <laughs> like you have to do that because I completely agree. You cannot have Cody's first title win be that title, which sucks for Seth because he just spent how long trying to build up the credibility and everything. Um, but no one will buy that. 
as finishing no. the story because part of the story is him getting fucked over at WrestleMania 39. Like exactly. him, like you're not overcoming any odds by winning Seth's title. Like it's he beat yeah. Seth like five to nothing in their feud. He beat yeah. him every time with a torn peck. There's yep. no reason for us to believe he can't beat Seth now. And yeah. Seth did a good job of selling the title recently when he's like, do you want to be Hogan or do you want to be Flair? And he's trying to sell it as the workhorse title. I like that. Again, it's just hard to buy knowing it's not the real title. It feels like there's a real title in WWE and Roman has had it for a thousand fucking days. And yeah. that's why it's the real title. This I one's existed for two months. It feels like question for you, Bob. Yeah. How would you feel differently about this situation if they brought back the big gold belt instead of creating this new oh. basically fake big gold belt to give to Seth? Because at least it had like a lineage, right? Yeah, like a, a uh, deep dude. Lineage. I think I would feel differently. It's so stupid. It feel it makes me feel stupid to say that a simple aesthetic title change would make me feel different about it. But yeah, like the big gold belt feels differently than this one you know i can't it was unsee- held by those guys like you can't like yeah. be like you know uh do you want to be flair do you want to be hogan it's like well like they never even fucking knew that this title existed because no one did yeah. it's brand new but if if that title's lineage goes back to flair and and hogan both of them held it at one point <clears throat> i would feel completely different about having cody go over against seth if that was the title that they were fighting for this is going to sound bad and I'm sorry for grossing out the listeners, but you know, that picture of, uh, I think it's Brian from the nasty boys, just like spreading his asshole. It's like a big viral photo. I'm sorry. There's a, <laughs> there's a picture that is disgusting. And I recommend you don't look it up of one of the nasty boys. I think it's Brian knobs just spreading his asshole. And Never when the title that. got unveiled, someone photoshopped his asshole onto the title. <laughs> and it ruined the title for me. I literally cannot see unsee nasty boys asshole when I see the Seth Rollins title. So I think a big gold belt is much needed. I mean, I yeah, that that's what I, I'm a little surprised that they didn't do that because it seemed like they it, they wanted to do that. The, someone tweeted at the time, like the belt feels like a compromise. It feels like Triple H said, I want the big gold belt back. And they said, you can't do a belt without the big WWE logo nowadays because we're going to send this to advertisers and sports teams. And he said, all right, we'll do the next best thing. So they just put the fucking WWE logo in the middle of they the big gold belt. smacked it on there like a sticker. Why wouldn't they... I mean, there it's wrestling. You can make shit up as you go. Why wouldn't they say that this is the big gold belt, but it just looks different? Maybe, they, maybe well, they are that trying with- to explain lineage, but like they unify the titles. So Roman has the lineage. You got to beat Roman to split that up. This is the other thing. I'm getting a lot of people saying like, just give it time. You know, they're going to explain it to the way it makes sense. I know they Triple H is up. running shit now, but like, what like do you have faith in WWE explaining this to us being like oh you know what it makes sense that Cody would give up that shot after beating 30 guys in the Royal Rumble like no they're not going to explain it so it makes sense they kind of just got it it turned into a mess because of the injuries and my, my brother also texted me he's like dude think of all the shit that had to happen to get to this point going back to like the pipe bomb going back to Cody being stardust leaving WWE starting AEW getting into a fight with Luke Perry's son and the young bucks. Like there are so many things that had to happen for us to get to this weird ass WrestleMania scenario. It feels like a simulation that we're here. A lot had to happen. And I bet you, I feel like it's not even a hot take. Punk probably feels awful that he he in some way is responsible like for this happening. It's like, yeah. I, cause he's like, I know exactly how this feels <laughs> like, because it, yeah. it almost exactly what is happening to you right now. Completely unfair. It's almost, would you say it's even more unfair to Cody than it was to punk? I think so because he won the rumble pointed at Roman and then cut a promo you, in his post post fight press conference where he's like, he's like, I am the guy I've been the guy forever. You've been missing out. He mentioned like Sean Ross Sapp texting him memes about the rock coming back. He's like, I don't want to see any of those memes anymore. And it's like, he really believed the night of the rumble. This is it. Like, and it's also not, it's like punk in that it's not just his storyline and his character. Cody Rhodes in his fucking heart wants that title. Like as a real 
real life goal. Yeah. So you're actually, oh, you're actually taking that away from him. And the fact that they made him trot out rock is so fucked. Like they should have done, if you wanted to do this, some scenario where Cody gets fucked out of the title shot again. Now, if you do that, you might risk a Daniel Bryan scenario where the crowd is like, well, what the fuck? Yeah. But at least it doesn't make Cody and look. There's silly. no, there's also no heel authority figure right now either. No, there's yeah, Aldis and uh, and Pierce who are I like both of them. Yeah. They're just not corporation type babies. figures. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah, they're they're uh, executives of the people right now. Um, yeah, but I, all of this, what we're saying is completely valid. But at the end of the day, to the 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 line of thinking where if like all Cody has is the story. So once he completes the story, what does he have? Well, I mean, there's plenty of feuds that I think a lot yeah. of fans would want to see Cody in as champion. So like, there's still some run there and there's still some juice, but I think now kind of going back to what I said earlier, um, you kind of just have the Cody Bobos and on the story, like those are the only people that cared about his story, but now even someone like me, I'm like, man, like, you know, even I kind of feel a little bit bad right now where I, I think if Cody won at WrestleMania 40 against Roman, I, it would have been a fuck like Roman lost moment for me. But now when Cody actually does win, I'll be happy for him. Where but is uh, that? Are we going to have to wait till next year's WrestleMania? Is this going to be because last year I was like, oh, my God, what a horrible decision not putting Cody over. He might never be that over with the crowd ever again. And then I've been counting down the days until they write that wrong like every day i'm like well we just got to get to next year's wrestlemania and then everything will even out and smooth out roman can go be a part-timer without the title we'll have a working champ on tv everything will be fine and now it's like what we're just gonna have another year of this was it you that said that roman basically has to lose the title at wrestlemania yeah i, th I think he does i don't think he Summer can Slam lose this he can't lose that Bro, SummerSlam? summer slams before the streak ends. So if you're going to put him over at WrestleMania, quarter, right? Have him get that close and then lose. Maybe, but like, I don't know, man. Like it would, it what would the be fuck awesome at SummerSlam still, but like it wouldn't it would be, be as totally awesome as different. WrestleMania. It, I, all right. I'm saying this as a, a Roman Reigns guy. Who cares if he passes Hogan? That makes him third all time. I agree. Like, it's not even like I agree. The record. Who the fuck yeah. cares about passing Hogan? He ain't passing Bruno. Bruno held it for like 25 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like they could make whatever arbitrary cutoff date they wanted. Like post Bruno be like, this is the modern era. So it's the longest in the modern era, whatever. Like baseball does that. They're just like, oh, they just make this arbitrary like date. Um, but to me, I don't care if he passes Hogan. I like what is it's like, all right, congratulations. Now you have the third longest title reign of all time. Who cares? Yeah. His title You're never going to be the long longest reign too. It's like if he were a little more active on TV, I might feel differently. I really am over the part-time champ. We've had part-time champs for like a decade in WWE. Yeah, going, back point, going back to Brock. Yeah. Like uh, I'm really over that. And it's not Roman's fault. He started as kind of a full-time champ or more of a full-time champ and him being part-time gives him that final boss, uh, like aura around him. Every time he shows up, he does feel like the star he was always promised to be, but I want him to be that star without the title. I want him to just be that Brock figure who shows up and makes everyone go, Oh fuck. Like the boss is here. Now we gotta, we gotta straighten our lines out. Now it's just, I, I feel like we're going to be in this vortex in this trap of Roman Reigns as champ forever. Solo is going to be interfering in hoodies for the next 20 years of the WWE. <laughs> Did you see that tweet that went viral about, Solo. He was like, "Why are you wearing a hoodie? We know it's you." <laughs> yeah, we all know it's Solo you. Solo blocked that guy over that tweet. I was like, "Come and then he on, he deleted man. his account. Solo deleted his account. Deleted his account. He might be as angry as he looks on television. I like know. that's the most lighthearted like chirp I've ever seen." Yeah, he's like, "Why does this dude always come out in hoodies?" Like, we know that it's you. <laughs> uh, There's a great Solo tweet too, where someone like they they had a clip of him going, and they were like, "Homie just realized he has a thumb." <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and i think he blocked that guy over that tweet too so was, he's on a block spree on twitter maybe it's for the best he deleted his account yeah he's a little he might be a little too sensitive but he's probably been getting the cody bobo tweets as you're calling him where did bobo come from is that a thing yeah felger calls people bobos that uh are like it's a massachusetts thing 
it's a fel. I mean, Felger's from Wisconsin, but he he'll call he'll he'll call people bobos if they if they're kind of just like I support this team no matter what they can do no wrong. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. I didn't know Felger was from Wisconsin. He does a he Boston radio show though, right? Felger and Felger Mass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, dude. This is this is a mess. The WrestleMania has turned into an all out mess. And are you not happy? Are you not like excited to for WrestleMania now? Did, did some of this this I hindered mean, my excitement? vastly yeah like and it sucks because i really like the rock like i do like the rock mm -hmm. but the last two times he's come back i've been put in a position where i'm like i don't want the rock to fucking win this match i don't even i don't want the rock to be in this match i want rock roman at SummerSlam or something like that yeah it's just uh, yeah yeah it's definitely it's definitely hindered my enjoyment on the last podcast i was like are you going to wrestlemania this year and you were like i'm not going to wrestlemania to see roman lose does this change you in that way where you're like i might go to wrestlemania this year <sighs> no only because it is philly and i could totally see them turning on it like i don't want like yeah. i would want to be a part of rock roman when everyone's into it and it's like an all-time classic but if the fans are just going to turn on it, I don't want to be a part of that because then it takes we'll have to monitor it because they might not. They might have such good promos that people are like, all right, this is fucking great. Like, I'm sorry, Cody, but this might be awesome in the ring. I mean, the yeah. face off on SmackDown was great. Them facing off and getting face to face. It gave me Rock Hogan vibes. But yeah. You know, Rock Hogan didn't need the title and sure that, they proved it. Mm -hmm. It's about the familial generational head of the table tribal chief type thing. Mm -hmm. Nobody, it doesn't make it feel bigger because the title's for the line at all. No. What do you think The Rock said to Cody? <laughs> like, thank you. I'm sorry that this is happening to you. I hope it was something along those lines. You you hope that it was something along those lines? I hope, yeah. Okay. I don't know what he said, though. Cody's face kind of turned in the middle of it. it. Like, in a negative way? It seemed like it, yeah. Like, what? A <laughs> what? A what if what if the rock just brought in cody and was just like go fuck yourself <laughs> <laughs> go fuck like if it like if you're the rock you're sitting there thinking i am the biggest star in the world in mm -hmm. all of entertainment not just pro wrestling i'm doing yeah, they've like changed this title it's not most electrifying man in sports entertainment all just of entertainment. Said entertainment now yeah which is correct. You come in here and I've even, I've seen some rational wrestling fans say rocks doing us a favor. Like we have the biggest star in all of entertainment saying, let me be a special guest on your yeah. program so that more people are paying attention, more people watching. That's more money for everyone else. Like he's, he's putting food he on everyone. Still table. be involved. Like the scenario that I spoke about earlier. Like, you want to be a special like guest Calderman referee. Before. You think that's putting yeah. asses in the seats, Bob? Dude, when no they did chance. Trump versus fucking McMahon, they made Stone Cold the special guest referee, and they did press conferences all over with Stone Cold as like the fucking highlight of it. That was wrestling. But he was at the time he was done wrestling, though. Like The Rock still wants to get in there. But bro, the, what do you what indicates that The Rock isn't done wrestling? He hasn't wrestled a real match in eleven years, and that one he got badly injured in. Yeah, and it was not a great match. Like I'm, um, I I was there. I you know was rooting for cena i was going crazy during the match but you watch it back it's just they just keep trading finishers the entire match that was his last match yeah i mean he did like the eric rowan match where he came in oh, yeah. the fastest match in wrestlemania history they just wanted like a headline or something but his last real match was wrestlemania 29 we're going on too. 40 like he was struggling at 29 what makes you think 11 years are going to make an improvement? By the way, speaking of this, this is totally unrelated, but I just had to mention it. Have you seen Mick Foley wants to do one more match? Yeah, he wants to do a death match for his So he wants to do birthday. a death match. Death match. I love Mick Foley. We love Mick Foley. We've had him on the podcast before. What are you thinking? I mean, I the one thing I like about it, he's like, I want to drop 100 pounds. That'll be my motivation to drop 100 pounds. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. That would I be amazing. And make him much healthier. You know, he's in his 60s, I think, at this point. Dropping that, 100 pounds he, would be great. This is for his 60th birthday. He said that's what he or, wants. Oh, yeah. For his 60th. Why I'm he sorry. wants to do it. Yes. The fact that he wants to do a death match. Like, bro, what are you talking about? You can't take a bump. We, we've I mean, the seen first... him walking lately. Yeah. I mean, he was he was walking with a cane when he came into the office. That was 2017. Yeah. That was like yeah. six, seven years ago at this point. Uh, I think he probably, after losing Terry Funk, 
probably looked at it as like look at how far into his 60s he went was still putting on crazy matches not saying it's a good thing like not yeah. saying that you should do it because someone else did it but that's probably and flair did his last match like maybe he wants to do the same sort of thing conrad thompson was involved conrad's involved with mcfoley's podcast mm -hmm. i don't know De when he says death match i'm like but what do you mean death match like mcfoley is known to have put his body on the line and take very stupid bumps that he shouldn't have taken looking back I don't want him to take any more of those. We've gotten all the entertainment we could have ever gotten out of Mick Foley's career. I just want him to be healthy and happy now. Yeah, like his body must feel like it's broken on the inside. Like what to. part of him waking up in the morning says, I want to fuck up my body some more. <laughs> like, like I feel like he has done irreparable damage to his body and his brain for that matter. Yeah. Uh, that fucking, that match against The Rock. Well, what was was that the Rumble ninety nine? Yeah, or two thousand maybe. It was around that time. Yeah, because it's yeah. in Beyond the Mat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he has done irreparable damage, where no amount of time healing or physical therapy or surgery is going to correct some of the problems that he has. Why would you want to? Like, especially when you're now approaching the years where you're just you're riding it out right now. Yeah, like, just just fucking ride it out and and have some moments of peace uh, at the end on the back nine. Yeah, just as watch say. your Christmas movies. You know, enjoy the Christmas <laughs> yeah, shit. Yeah. Like, you did it, man. Hall of it. Famer. You did everything you could have done in your career. We're thankful for your career. We yeah. just don't want you to fucking go get hurt. And he's he is funny in the clip. He's like, I talked it over with my kids. They said, do you think you're going to get hurt? I said, probably. <laughs> <laughs> he knows he's aware but he's crazy i mean that's that's mick foley that's kind of the epitome of his career right there he is crazy but i think the other thing or other reason why in addition to all the obvious reasons why he should not do this is out of all and i know you would probably say the first undertaker hbk match maybe um out of all like the athletic amazing superstars in professional wrestling history if i were talking to someone that was looking at me like i had five heads because i like professional wrestling and they were like just show me one match to convince me what it is that makes you love this shit so much i'm going to the hell in a cell match in 98 king of the ring undertaker mick foley mankind like that's the one that i'm showing them i actually yeah. did that uh in atlanta when we went to the super bowl and there were some people oh, yeah. like barstool people like we watched the rumble and then like i don't get it like why like why do you like wrestling and i was like brother how much time because <laughs> if, if we've got like a half hour then i've got the, the match for you to see and i put that on and people were into it uh every time that they were like holy shit that's crazy I'm like wait <laughs> just it's not yeah. done there's more <laughs> yeah. um yeah no like that's that definitely one of those like that's one of the the most iconic matches in the history of wrestling and it's weird to call it a match because it feels like a fight or like a spectacle in some way it's not like you mentioned like an hbk taker it's a totally different thing but it's the most entertaining thing that's maybe ever happened inside or, or outside a wrestling ring for most of it yeah. and the stories that go along with it just make it that much better take your going into the match with a broken foot mm -hmm. them not pre being prepared for him to go through the cell when he did and him landing on the chair and the tooth being lodged in his fucking nose terry funk getting choke slammed out of his shoes <laughs> out of his new balances. boom new balances go flying like yeah. everything about that match makes better mick fully has a couple of those too i mean it's nowhere near that hell in a cell level but the wrestlemania 22 match with edge is a match i feel like you could show to people and be like this is why i like wrestling yeah, Triple H, Cactus Jack the at the table. Rumble. Exactly. He's got so many where you're like, I can't believe this is real. And then you could go watch his title win on Raw and be like, this is why people like underdogs. This is the ultimate underdog winning. And the story that goes along with that, with WCW trying to spoil it. Like, yeah, Mick, Mick has so many great career memories. We don't need any more. We're good. That's my take on the whole situation. Yeah, He's the we're best. We're good, dude. <clears throat> We're like all I, on the death match. I'm totally have, a, have a event like Mick Foley's 60th birthday and have him fucking run in on the death match main event and hit Mr. Sacco. That would be awesome. You know, That'd make it two current death match stars, Nick Gage versus someone else, and just let him fucking have a big highlight moment there. He don't need yeah. to be taking bumps. No more bumps. His bump no card is full. Please, Mick, for us. Um for us, I hope that we keep doing these podcasts. I hope they keep giving us enough content. 
in WWE and possibly even AEW. I know Sting's got his last match coming up. Wrestling's good right now, and it's fun to talk about even when it's a mess like it is right now. So hopefully we keep doing these, Rocket. I mean, when, when I get the text, I'm available for media. I know what time it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, uh, as long as... As long as like our our actual employers are not like, hey, did you guys just like relaunch a wrestling <laughs> podcast and not tell us like you guys are just doing this? I'm down. I'm down to do these all the time. I don't give a fuck. Because yeah. like, I, 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 I told you I started a group text with all my wrestling fan friends and I needed to do that for my my sanity. Like I, I'll be sitting there and I have no one to talk to. But like I have these very strong opinions about this thing that I care about immensely, but I have nowhere for these opinions to go. So I just created a melting pot of people, wrestling fans in my life. I know you're not in there because I feel like yeah. I, I text you like on the side, like, yeah, like True. you are someone that I talk to like straightforward. Uh, and then, and then I'll talk to like this, this whole, uh, group text thing. You'll but give them the B plus takes and you give me the A plus takes. You get the immediate reaction. <laughs> and then like, you'll correct my opinion. If it's like, actually, no, that's wrong. Be like, then I can take my more educated opinion to, to the group, <laughs> um, as, as their leader. So yeah, whenever whenever you want to do these, I'm I'm around, Bob. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have some takes always on wrestling. Would you say like they're your bloodline and um your Heyman? You're like my Afa and Sika, and they're they're like <laughs> yeah yeah they're like uh, the the Usos, I guess. Uh, I'm more their Rikishi. I don't know. I can't. There's a long line there. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't. By the way, how do you think other. Roman feels about this? I think Roman feels awkward about it a little bit. Um, maybe I don't know. I, I guess it all depends on if he had uh, vacation plans for May. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like now it's like fuck. You got to keep the title now. You we need you. Uh, yeah, because I'm sure if he if he lost that mania, we probably wouldn't even see him again until SummerSlam. No, yeah, but which now makes he's sense. Work yeah, a couple events before there, right? Like, I mean, not that we're expecting every pay-per-view um yeah he ain't working yeah. backlash yeah no but he he I'm unless sure they do it, like another international backlash that was sick last year when they did it in puerto rico that was sick that bad it's bunny awesome. entrance is still the best i think of the entire year in terms of yeah. like pops besides the the sammy turn it was the bad bunny entrance for me and you had carlito returning there you had savio vega appearing backstage like they fucking they knew what they were doing with that backlash event that was awesome was, very well done very well done but yeah i think i don't know i i'm sure roman deep down it's like all right it's another wrestlemania main event i believe does this one tie hogan for the most of all time this year i think it does yeah seven i think it's he main evented what 31 32 33 34 not 35 um 36 the first covid one was he in no no that was drew and drew and brock and then taker and aj and taker and aj 37 who was in the 37 main event uh i don't know i think Let's i was see. there which is bad that i don't remember which one was that oh it was um it was him it was the triple threat with brian and edge Roman Reigns has headlined numerous pay-per-view events, including WWE's flagship event, WrestleMania, seven times. 31, 32, 33, 34, 37, 38, and 39. Yeah. 38 was the last Brock match that was like, what were we doing there? Or actually, it wasn't the last Brock match, was it? They did a SummerSlam match, and that one was great, where Brock lifted the fucking Tip ring the with the ring, trailer. Yeah. yeah. How many WrestleMania main events has... Hulk Hogan did one, two, three, eight. Five. All right. So this is the tie. Roman's at okay. seven. Hogan has main evented eight times. So this is what are tie. Hogan's one, two, three. There's um, a lot of four, five. I think he did five is mega powers. Six is six. warrior. Seven slaughter. Slaughter. Psycho Sid. did no, nine but... is Yokozuna, which is a sneaky main event. He comes in and cashes in his invisible money in the bank on Yokozuna at the end of WrestleMania nine. He has the last match on that card. Oh, so that doesn't, they didn't count that. Interesting. Yeah. It's not King the advertised main event. I guess he literally just came out, hit a big boot, a leg drop after Bret Hart got salt in the eyes from Mr. Fuji. Yeah. Mr. T King Kong Bundy. 
Andre the Giant, Randy Savage, mm-hmm. Ultimate Warrior, Sergeant Slaughter, Psycho Sid. Warrior is my favorite match of all those. WrestleMania 6 is fucking awesome. Yeah, that's a good one. All right. That was our second emergency from the top <laughs> rope of the week. We did it like three days ago, literally, and we're doing it again because WWE made us. And if they keep making us, we'll keep coming back down to the basement and doing from the top rope. Caravis, thanks for being here. Everyone that was listening, thanks for listening.